don't actually do any work around the house, but by hammering nails into this fence thing, it looks like I'm doing something natural and like a conversational beginning to a video. So I've been reminiscing. I've been looking back since we started this channel. Back here, we did a lot of work back here. And we, we, we've done like over like 18,000 videos in the last few years. And a lot of them you guys have never seen. And uh, a lot of them featured my daughter-in-law, Uncle Crystal, who I miss terribly. Because she's busy, she's very busy. You know, she's a mom, my, my two beautiful granddaughters. And uh, she's a teacher. And she sells real estate. She actually has a channel called Crystal Sells Tennessee. And uh, for a while, we we did a channel together, the Lost UTG channel. So, uh, but she's busy. She's too busy for YouTube. She's too busy for me. She's too busy for cars. You know, she's actually a, a Nobel Prize winning microbiologist, and she's uh, the official dance choreographer for the Greek Orthodox Church. So she's busy. She's busy. But I wanted to come back. I wanted to come back so that we can we can pick up where we left off and uh, ask Uncle Tony. That's the lost channel. We had a whole channel called Ask Uncle Tony because I used to get asked questions all the time. All kinds of questions and she would filter through them and read them to me. Here's a uh, Here's some of those questions. Here's some of, of, of what you guys have probably never seen. I'm Uncle Tony. Challenge my super mind. Uncle Crystal? Hi, Uncle Tony. So, here we are, our first episode of Ask Uncle Tony, mm -hmm. where people are writing from your know, questions. Yes generally from our other channel Uncle Tony's Garage yes. and this is where you know we compile all these questions and, and, and answer them yes yes and you Uncle Crystal are in charge of all that and you'll ask me the questions and I'll or yes. something right yes yeah okay. yeah hey <coughs> there's satanic graffiti in the back of the Jeep oh. let's go to the swing oh my gosh Come on. I didn't mean to scream like a girl, but you know, it caught me by surprise. <laughs> Questions! All Uncle right. Crystal? It's from Buff Del Campo. Buff Del Campo. Buff Del Campo. I would almost have another kid just to name it Buff Del Campo. <laughs> okay? All right. Buff Del Campo says, concerning valve springs, what yeah. are the inner springs for? Uh, some people call them dampers. Do they add more spring pressure or do they damper it somehow? They do add a little bit of spring pressure, but their job is to be a damper. Because at high RPM, the, this wire on the spring will start to oscillate. And the damper helps keep it maintaining its form. So it's less likely to float the valves. Okay. Damn, that was a good answer. <laughs> I'm bored of the swings. I got vertigo. Oh, don't fall. Ask me more questions, Uncle Crystal. All right. All right, so this one's from John Johnson. John Johnson! <laughs> what does John want to know? He says, what are your thoughts of sticking an early Hemi in a 62 to 69 B body? Oh. Here's a picture of a 57 Plymouth Savoy with a Generation 1 Hemi. I think the owner said it was a 354. Ah, uh, okay. Well, that car has no relation to 65 and, or 62 and up B body. Okay. And they're broken into two classifications. There's 62 to 65 B body and then there is 66 through 71 because they moved the engine two inches further back in 1966. So it's a good boy. It, it's almost a bolt and swap. You use a small block transmission with a spacer. Okay. 727, 904, doesn't matter. And uh, it's almost bolt in. Um, you can use a set of small block motor mounts. Any place you can bolt a small block. You can bolt an early Chrysler. Okay. Yeah, go for it. Sounds like a fun swap, man. <laughs> All right. I can't get down from here. Oh, no. All right. What's he doing? Oh, it's uh, screwing up bottle lock a little bit. What's going on? Come to challenge your super mind. My super mind needs to be challenged. Good. Questions give me strength. Yes. Okay. 
We've got one side of it, like yeah, yeah. Yeah. Look okay, ahead, what do we got? Tony! <laughs> I want my chicken. What are you doing? We have more questions. No, no questions today. Yeah, well, we've got more questions. Well, well, ask questions to the chicken. I don't want to answer questions today. No questions from you. No, we have to do questions. Today. We have viewers that count on us. Quit. Oh, shit. No, no questions yes, today. Quick. No, wait, where are no you questions going? today. Tony, wait. Oh, Crystal, questions today. Wait. I can't do questions today. We have questions. No. What? Well, yeah, I hang up with Crystal. Hey, What's up? Got more questions. Oh, look, I have to get my super mind to rest. <laughs> These questions, they're, they're breaking me down. Well, you have a responsibility with the vast amount of knowledge that you have. So, I have to answer these questions. At least part. a few. All right, well then, you know what? I'll tell you what. Let's go over here. And I can uh, I can probably answer the questions better from like you know over here. Okay. No, Tony, wait. What? Goodness gracious! Where are my keys? Oh here. Goodness gracious! What is he doing? Crystal. Hi, Uncle Tony. What? So, hey, reversing the pistons. Will this horsepower trick work on the BBC 454? Oh, shit. Yeah. Not if it don't. It'll only work on a true flat top piston without any valve release. Okay. Okay, all right, it's enough. Thank you. She just got the biggest floor of every big block Chrysler. Okay. The other 440s only 4.32. The 400 starts at 4.34. Okay. You know, thick floor. Makes great sources. Is that it? Okay. See you later. Thunderbird, pretty much stock except for the exhaust system. Okay. So the question is, the car's got dual exhaust with one muffler on each side, but the mufflers are of different makes. So the two-part harmony sound is great, but can it harm the engine? Well, that's actually a pretty good idea. No, it can't hurt the engine at all, but I, I, I like that idea. Okay. Yeah, can, I'm just going to pump some gas. Okay. I'll see you later, Uncle Crystal. Bye-bye. got away from us. The car is a little bit faster than I thought. I mean, I guess he did do drag racing, <laughs> so that would make sense. Alright, well, we just have to do one more question and then we can leave him alone until the next one. We'll give him a rest for the day. Just got to catch up with him and get him one more question. Alright, 
We're at Sammy's. It's one of his favorite lunch places. And his car, right there. Hey, how you doing? Good, where's Tony? Tony, Tony who? Oh, I saw his car outside. That's my car. <laughs> <laughs> no, Tony's car. The, the other car, oh. No, he's not here. I haven't seen him in a while. Oh, huh. So, uh... Yeah? So who are you feeding? Who are you feeding? That's my friend. Your friend, Tony. This Tony you talking about? Tony, yeah, <laughs> Tony. <laughs> Yes, Uncle Crystal. But we got like one more question, and then I will leave you in peace. Stuff your face. <laughs> he gave me up, Sammy. Yeah, what? All right. <laughs> one more question. One more question. All right. Okay, so this comes from Vinny Morgan. Vinny Morgan. Vinny Morgan. Perfect. Vinny is a very, very Italian name. All right. He says, I've been eyeing my first Mopar, an 87 Chrysler Fifth Avenue. It is equipped with a lean burn 318, and I don't know if I should believe the negative stigma of lean burn or not. What are your thoughts on the lean burn system? Oh, it's pure junk. Just get it out of here for the regular distributor in it, the regular car burn, and call it a day. Okay. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Can that's I the last eat question. and then go back to my chickens? Sure. <laughs> what? What's, uh, what's with the chicken? That's my stressed chicken. It's not one of your chickens. No, no. Okay, no. good, because I like the chicken. No, I never. No, you don't. I, I like to squeeze the chicken. It's, okay. uh, you know, stress, okay. right? So I, you can't do that with the live ones. Right. I tried. They they get a little crazy. They scream. At, right? right. So so I like to keep, uh, you know, this type around. Right. Of course. Yeah. Okay. For stress. Yes. Okay. No, no, no. I'm I'm okay. Thank you. Ask me questions, Uncle Crystal. I have lots of questions. We have a lot of questions. Good, good. Quis questions give me power. Good. Hmm? This one, it, it was a little long, but yeah. um, it is from, and I, I'm really sorry if I'm pronouncing anything wrong, but Prunlimited, Prunlimited is the name that he put on here. Prunlimited, Prunlimited. Yep. That's as good a name as any. All right. His parents must have hated him. I, <laughs> right. Yeah. Let's call him Jim. Jim. All right, okay. Jim. Jim says, hey UTG, I love your videos and the knowledge that you share. I had a crazy idea for breaking in cam and lifters. Could a guy take a junk block by block off the main oil feed ports, toss the rotating assembly, install the oil pump and oil pan, install the heads, plumb in the oil sender port a tube that runs parallel with the cam and drill so it lubricates each cam load surface. <laughs> install the cam and lifters. Now adapt a belt pulley to the cam and hang a one horsepower electric motor. You would have to size the pulley for the cam rotation at about 1100 RPMs. Put oil in the pan and run it for 20 to 25 minutes. The only thing that concerns me is the exhaust load won't have the same pressure as a running engine, but could I put a nasty spring or even a medium pressure <coughs> like Oh my god, Tony! <laughs> what? Tony, what are you doing? I'm sorry. Oh my god, what are you doing? Oh, did I, did I accidentally <laughs> try to hang my fucking self oh my while god. all that was going on? Uh, I'm sorry. That was a pretty fucking tense question, damn it. <laughs> Your stress chicken isn't working? No, it went past the boundaries of my stress chicken. I noticed my my beard was starting to get a little gray. You, you see, I, I just touched it up. Yeah, you see, it's uh, it's like you know, it's to oh. see. Oh. No, it, it gets rid of the gray. <laughs> What's going on, Uncle Crystal? Well, we've got some questions, and we haven't done it in a while. You look at your glitter in there. I think it has glitter in it. Oh, okay. Is it better? Per perfect. Perfect. Well, we got some questions. Oh, then, yeah, we haven't done an yeah. Inspectable Tony video in a long time. It's been a really long time. Okay. What do we got? Um, okay, so the first one 
Uh, it's just from It's Me, so there's no name. It's just just, it's, just me. it's Me? Yep. But not you. Not me. It's somebody named exactly. It's Me. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, okay so, uh, first question, super short. Were some Dodge or Mopar and Ford parts interchangeable in the 70s and 80s? Just the rims. They have the same bolt pattern okay. and the same the same center register. Okay. You know, but uh, no, for the most part, I can't think of anything that's directly interchangeable. No. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I mean, you could probably must force anything into any. Right, right. Maybe right. heat and then. Heat, right. Right. Okay. Force. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All well, right. If I'm trying Second. to be more youthful. Oh, you're right. Because you're so youthful, oh, and I want I want us to match. You know okay. what I'm saying? That would make sense. That makes sense. Okay. All right. Uh, this one's from Jeff Schmidt. Jeff Schmidt. Jeff Schmidt. Betcha he's got a manly beard, right? He probably does. Yeah. He probably doesn't Schmidt. have to use that stuff. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I have an 81 C10 pickup. I'm wanting to build a 383 stroker engine. Okay. I'm thinking about putting a roller cam in it. I just can't find any information about break-in on a roller cam. I thought the break-in was for the face of the hydraulic lifters and the lobe of the cam. So I guess my question is, is a roller cam just a turnkey or is there a break-in procedure? Yeah, it's just turnkey, just drop it. I mean, obviously lube it up. I would I would soak the rollers in the, uh, you know, in the lifters. Okay. You know, give them a little soak in oil so, so that, you know, they don't start dry. But yeah, there is no break-in period with a roller the same way you have with a hydraulic or a regular fly tap at camp. Okay. I feel like I missed a spot. Yeah, I like this shirt, so I don't want to. <laughs> We, like we even have yellow on. We do, we match. Oh my god. Look, we even have brown boots. We oh, do. You want some of this? No, no, no. Please, thank you. I'm good. I'm, I'm good. This is from Italy. TJ Maxx, six this bucks. This is from Italy, but, too. Yeah, this is from Italy, too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, next. Next, next, next. Okay, um, it says, hi, Crystal and Tony. Oh, this is from Grant Lee. I'm sorry. Grant Lee. Grant Lee. That's uh, two generals. I was just going to say, Grant yeah. Lee, they, I wonder huh. if he's like at war with himself. He's from Australia. From oh. <laughs> war with himself. <laughs> okay. Uh. okay. Um, it says, hi, Crystal and Tony. I'm, I am sure all Australian small block motors were crate engines from the States. I have a 77 model Valiant 318 engine, which is a two barrel blue motor. This is the last model before ELB was fitted the following year. Okay. In Australia, we never had unleaded till 1986, and you had it in 1973. This is a long question. It is a long question. We he got like one more type. sentence. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Would your export engines have hardened valve seats? If not, would Edelbrock heads be okay on a stock rebuild with a four barrel? All Chrysler engines have hardened valve seats after 1970. Pre 1970, they didn't harden them, but they're generally hard enough to use in daily traffic. I, I, a couple of my engines have original seat early cylinder heads, and I run them all the time on them when they don't have a problem. Some unhardened seats are tougher than others. Okay. But if he's got a blue motor, a blue 318, okay. post-1970, yeah, it's already got hardened seats in it, so okay. he's good to go. Okay. Um, so I actually have a question. <laughs> All right, so um, uh, the the different size, <laughs> the different Mustard. size engines. So there's a the three eighteen and like a four forty and um. Three eighteen, four forty, yes. Six. Yes. Okay, so what's the difference and why you have it all over your face? <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, it, it'll it'll clean up. Okay. All right. But, but it adds to the youthful appearance. Do I feel youthful now? You look so youthful. Yeah. So. It's amazing. You want to know the difference between the slant six? A small block and a big block? Yeah, I don't even know what that means. You know, you left out Henny. Oh, okay. Which means you know nothing. Yeah, I don't know anything. Crystal, this is very important. Yes. And I'll put the colored pencils. Okay. Listen. Yes. The world is changing rapidly. Yes. You know, there's this whole move to green, green energy, right? Yeah. We got, they're going to electrify all the cars, right? All this crazy stuff is going on. Right. I want to be ahead of the trend. I have something that's even more efficient than electricity. Okay. This is going to revolutionize everything. Okay. Ready? Yes. Okay. We're going to build the world's first motorcycle powered car. Mm. You like that, right? It seems crazy. All right. But I need mozzarella. I need the purest mozzarella. We could possibly get the freshest mozzarella, and then I'm going to figure out some way to jam it through a carburetor and run an engine on it. Okay. Can you handle this? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to need some. All right, I'm off to do important things. Okay.
Kathy. I'm right here. Oh, shit. Okay. You put it right in. Tony needs the finest, most purest cheese. Mo mozzarella. <laughs> mozzarella. Do you know how to make it? Yeah, mutts, yeah. Oh, good. Awesome. Okay, great, because I'm going to need your help. Let's go. Okay. Okay. Okay, we're in the kitchen. Check. Next. Wine. Check. Okay. Okay, next we pour the whole gallon of milk. Yes, because we're making cheese. This is why I have you here to remind me what we're making. Okay, so the whole gallon is right in here. Okay, one gallon, check. What's next? Okay, so the temperature is like 86 degrees, no, 90 degrees. It's about 90 degrees. And it's starting to curdle. See? Awesome. So this is all going into the carburetor. Crystal! Yes? Is it ready to go yet? Is it cheese? Uh, no. I'm ready to start forcing it through the carburetor so we can run okay. this car and revolutionize mankind. Listen, okay? What? <laughs> we hit a snag. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna try again. It's it's cheese flavored water right now, so <clears throat> I can't run a car on that. I'm aware. Uh... cheese experiments been going oh it's uh, obviously a later date yes. based on your change of clothes yes 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 well we've we've had a few days of yeah. progress and uh and i i think that we're okay really yes show me what you've what you've accomplished uh-huh you you cook it in the plastic of course that, how, that's isn't that how everybody cooks it that's how i cook it i would think so i mean it's easier so <laughs> <laughs> No, Crystal, this is not going to work. This cheese is clearly too stiff. What are you, why are you laughing? <laughs> you the <laughs> this cheese is clearly too stiff to fit through the tiny openings in the carburetor. There is no way I can run an engine on this consistency of cheese. Oh, you're right. Right, okay. It's horrible. What the hell are we going to do, Crystal? Uh, I, I don't We're know. failing. Yeah, it's very hard. It's a very difficult process to make cheese. Wait a minute. I have an idea. What? Well, this may not be ready to be used as a motor fuel just yet. Right. It's a new way to power dogs. <gasps> Look how happy she looks. Hey, Maggie. Here you go. Okay. All right. Done. Consider yes. it done. Go right. eat cheese. High five. Oh, yes. yes. All right. Okay. I'm going back to the drawing board. Maybe we try running one on provolone. Oh, yeah. Mozzarella might not be the thing. Uncle Crystal, please come back!